Hey guys, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get the basics down before solving lots of problems, take my Udemy course, HVAC and Refrigeration Fundamentals. In less than five hours, you'll review all the major topics you need for the PE exam. By the end, you'll actually be excited to start studying. 101 Solve Mechanical Engineering Problems, HVAC 7. A 24-hour disco, and don't ask me how old this problem is, that it's about a disco, <laughs> has a maximum occupancy of 240 adults, 120 males, 120 females, half of which are usually dancing, and half of which are talking while seated around tables. The disco experiences the following heat gains in addition to occupant loads. Food preparation moisture, 45,000 grains per hour, and heat gain and equipment heating, 140,000 BTUs per hour. 60 degree dry bulb air is supplied by the air conditioning apparatus, and air is removed from the disco when it reaches 77 degrees and 50% relative humidity. Makeup air consists of 4,500 CFM of outside air, which is 90 degrees dry bulb and 76 degrees wet bulb. And they have three questions for us. A, what volume and CFM of air is supplied to the disco? B, what is the humidity ratio of the air supplied to the disco? And C, what is the tonnage of the air conditioning unit? So I drew a picture here on the right of what's going on. And this is a very typical setup where we have some amount of air being exhausted and replaced by outside air which is especially important in a crowded environment. You want to make sure there's a lot of fresh air there. And then we have our AC unit, which is supplying 60 degree air. And the goal is to satisfy the space, which needs to be kept at 77 degrees and 50% relative humidity, which is then returned. And some of that is recirculated and some of it is exhausted to make room for that outside air. So for the first part, part A, they want to know the volume in CFM of air supplied to the disco. So for that, let's use our good old rule of thumb, which says QS equals 1.08 CFM delta T, with the understanding that when we use this formula, we have to use the sensible heat load only, and that the volume flow rate will go in with units of CFM, that's implied, and the delta T will be the difference in temperature between the room and the supply air. So we pretty much know delta T, we wanna know CFM. In order to move forward, we have to quantify what is the sensible heat load? And that really comes from two places. It comes from the people, which are either sitting or dancing, and the equipment, which we've been given here, this heat gain and equipment heating. So we're gonna add those two together. Let's deal with the people first. And as we're doing that, let's make sure we tally up the latent heat load as well, because we're gonna need that for the second part of this problem. So we may as well do it in one shot. And I'm pulling these numbers from the MERM table 40.4 which is approximate heat generation by occupants. So let's break up the sensible and latent into separate rows, and then we'll put a total below. And we have to separate out the folks that are sitting and those that are dancing. People that are dancing are gonna generate more heat. And then we'll figure out the average, and then we'll multiply by the quantity, and we'll get the total. So according to that table, if we take the average or blended rate of both men and women, the total heat generation for people that are sitting down, working and talking, is about 330 BTUs per hour, of which that breaks up into 225 BTUs per hour sensible and 105 latent. If you get those people up and get them dancing, assuming they're moving pretty good, they'll have a heat load of 850 BTUs per hour, which is substantially higher, but you'll notice both the sensible and latent increase, but the sensible doesn't increase nearly as much. It increases to 305, and the latent increases to 545. So people are sweating, and that's what's allowing them to stay cool. And we're assuming that half the people are dancing and half the people are seated. So to make the math easier, let's just take the average, which means the average person is somewhere in between 590 BTUs per hour total, of which that breaks into 325 latent that's just the average of these two numbers, and 265 sensible. And now there's 240 people, so that applies to both of these columns. Those aren't added together, obviously. There's only 240 total. And then we multiply the average sensible heat load per person times the number of people, so 265 times 240,
and we get a total sensible heat load of 63,600, and that's BTUs per hour. And for the latent, 325 times 240, so it's a bit more, that's 78,000 BTUs per hour latent. And let's just keep in mind that this applies to people only because we also have these latent and sensible contributions from food prep and other heat gain and equipment in the space, so we're going to have to include those. So for the moment, let's just tally up the sensible since that's what we care about for part A. We can say Q dot S, sensible heat load, equals the 63,600 from the people, plus this 140,000 BTUs per hour from the equipment. We don't need to worry about the food prep since that's latent. And that equals 203,600 BTUs per hour, which we can then plug into this formula, which I'll rearrange to solve for CFM. So the volume flow rate of air that we need is going to be Q dot over 1.08 and the delta T. So let's subwrite in 203,600 over 1.08 and 77 minus 60, where 77 is the conditions in the room and 60 is the temperature of the supplier. And that works out to 11,090 CFM. And that is answer A.